Welcome to the Self-Care in Long-Term Care podcast series. In the previous podcasts, we discussed self-care to reduce burnout, fatigue, and stress. If you haven't had a chance to listen to the previous podcasts, you are encouraged to do so. Each podcast builds upon previous concepts. As we continue to explore burnout prevention, stress reduction, and strategies to reduce fatigue, we need to consider the good things that lead to good change because of our shift in mindset and about how we approach stressful situations. Barbara Fredrickson, a psychologist who specializes in the power of positivity once said, the negative screams at you, but the positive only whispers. When you think about that statement, the reality of its truth starts to set in. The negative screams at you, but the positive only whispers. When negative things happen, it is like a spotlight has turned on. It is easy to see all the bad things that have gone wrong, all the negative areas that happened. However, when good things or positive things happen, they typically go unnoticed. We have programmed ourselves over the decades to notice the bad and ignore the good. How? Why? Negative feelings, emotions, and events are more powerful than their counterparts and are incessantly vying for our attention. Negative emotions and events also impact and affect us more deeply. In long-term care, we are constantly surrounded by stress. If we don't have the ability or personal tools and resources to overcome the stressors and challenges of what we face daily, Providing quality resident-centered care becomes increasingly difficult to accomplish. Day in and day out, inability to manage the stress, frustrations, and challenges leads to burnout, turnover, and negative outcomes for our residents. Stress is obvious when you are working in healthcare. It is physically and emotionally demanding. However, there are hundreds of positive things that happen every single day that go virtually unnoticed. Here are a few examples of positive events that you likely don't even think about. Teammates working together to help a resident bathe. A resident who smiles at you after they successfully walk down the hallway. A group of team members who share a laugh together in the break room. A resident who thanks you for brushing their hair a colleague who shares their gratitude for something you did that made an impact. There are numerous things that happen every day that will go unnoticed. Each of these events offer us an opportunity, the opportunity to highlight the goodness that still exists all around us, the opportunity to engage staff in increasing their resilience to stress and enhancing their own well-being. Perhaps one of the easiest ways to reduce burnout, fatigue, and stress is to implement the good things, or said differently, implement good change. Implementing good things or good change is an incredibly simple yet powerful tool that can be used anywhere in your organization and by anyone. It helps to counteract the natural tendencies to focus on the negative. The key to implementation is finding what works best for you, your team, and your organization. Maybe it is something that you implement daily during huddles. Maybe it is weekly at a team meeting, or maybe it is something that you do monthly at your all staff meetings. Whatever the case might be, implement it so that it makes the most sense to your organization and what is the most meaningful. Let's look at how an individual can implement the good things for a good change. Anyone can start the good things intervention. It can be at the end of a shift, at the end of the day, before you go to bed at night, or any other time that works for you. Write down or say out loud at least three good things that happened that day and reflect on why they happened, Writing them down gives you something to review later when you need inspiration. 
You may find it challenging at first to find three good things, but over time and after a little practice, you will start to notice more and more good things. The good things will bring out a good change. Before you know it, you have solidified the good change in your routine. Your brain begins to interpret and recognize the positive moments in life that we experience every single day more effectively. Next, let's explore how to implement the good things for a good change in your teams. You have likely heard that education is critical when you are implementing any new change in your team. The same is true for implementation of the good things. Education helps to increase your team's awareness of and understanding of how to use the intervention to refocus from the negative events to the positive events. When this shift in thinking and understanding happens, you will see improvements in staff morale that has a ripple effect all the way out to the residents and their family members. You might have to get a little creative to help your team members recognize the positive events that happen at work. Perhaps one method to get creative and engage your team members is to start a positive event sheet of paper and pass it around. Each team member could write down one positive event that happened that day. Don't have time to write it down? No problem. Pull your team together for five minutes and ask them to quickly go around and verbally state a positive event that happened. At first, it might take a while, but with practice, it will become much quicker. In essence, you are rewiring your brain to pull out the positives and take note that there are good things that happen every day. This brings for good change, not only within a single person, but also within your entire team. Many of us are tied up in meetings throughout the course of the day. The best thing about implementing the good things for good change is that it can be done during these meetings as well. Incorporating it into meetings could be as simple as asking participants to share something good at the start of the meeting. This can set the tone of the meeting. It shifts from the negative perception of a meeting to seeking to find the positive in the meeting. When you start off on a positive note, you not only change the tone, but you also engage the staff in open discussions and challenges. Just the same, you could also opt to end your meetings with positive energy by asking participants to share the good things at the end of the meeting. This helps team members in the meeting leave with positive energy rather than feeling drained by the meeting. That positive energy can then be shared with the rest of the team who might not have been at the meeting. To take this concept one step further, you can also engage team members in identifying three good things and one thing that can be done better. This helps team members feel comfortable in approaching the barriers and challenges that they encounter and encourages them to speak up about those challenges they experience. As a member of a healthcare team, it is important that we recognize the critical aspects of building staff resilience, self-care, and helping team members improve their well-being. Implementing the good things for good change holds the proverbial key to enhancing lives, enabling positivity, and adjusting to challenges and barriers we face in long-term care. As we bring this podcast to a close, I want you to consider how you, your team, and your organization might change by implementing the good things. What do you have to lose by giving it a shot? Start changing your mindset and focus from negative to positive. The step you take today is the most important one for tomorrow. Until the next podcast, be well and take a moment to train your mind to see the good in everything. Thank you for joining us today as we reviewed the importance of self-care and the power of good things for good change.